Hi everyone, my name is Yaniv, as Greg mentioned. I'm the CEO of and co-founder of uh, Sumla. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about viral installs, uh, how to get more users to share and rate your game and get more virality for your game or organic installs. I know we all want that for our games. Um, just a bit about uh, my company. Uh, Sumla allows uh, mobile game developers to do more together. Um, it's an open source company. We have a community of uh, thousands of game developers, uh, about 3,000 live games, and 100 million end users. And instead of every one of those developers uh, developing uh, game components on their own, they share resources and do it together. And it's much more uh, efficient this way. And it's also free and open source, and uh, they all love it. Um, for my company, for Sumla, uh, we have our own VARA loop. Uh, it's not a game, obviously, but uh, that's uh, part of uh, the way we distribute uh, our SDK, or framework, is through open source. And the way that works is uh, a lot of uh, developers uh, discover uh, our open source in uh, forums. And then this is the example of uh, Make It Rain. It was the top uh, game in, in May, um, developed by a studio out of Barcelona. We didn't know him. He learned about Sumla in a forum. And then he liked it, and he blogged about it, so more people can hear about it. And then uh, he's also using that for other games. So this is kind of how we generated our viral loop. It's a bit different than generating a viral loop in games. But for us, open source was a really big driver for, uh, for that. Um, and then moving on to how you actually get viral loop in, in games. So I've been studying this subject for, for quite a while, looking at both games that are uh, very successful at generating uh, more sharing and rating and getting more users to recommend their games to their friends, as well as games that weren't successful at it. And I, I try to find out what is it that differentiate the successful games from the unsuccessful ones in terms of sharing. And what I dis discovered is that there are really only three things that uh, they differ. One is the story, so uh, the narrative of the game. The successful games that are able to get users to share build a narrative around sharing. And then the other one is timing. Uh, when to pop up the request to, to share the game or uh, to connect on Facebook and things like that. And the third one is how easy it is to do it. And so before we jump into the details, uh, we need to understand that there are really three ways in which users um, uh, uh, share their games, right? One is to review the game and to rate it on the App Store, and obviously more people hear about it this way, and it drives the App Store algorithms and more people uh, discover the game organically. The other one is sharing on Facebook, and that's when we say more sharing, uh, we, all use, we all think about Facebook. But what's interesting is that there is a lot of sharing actually happening offline. Um, and that's really a huge driver for virality in games, and that's happened uh, to most successful games I know. I know about this from a personal experience. I know that this is how I discover apps. I discovered secret app because a friend told me. I discovered Tinder because I saw it at a friend's phone. And then I also uh, got quite a few people addicted to Candy Crush because I showed them uh, back in the days that when I was one of the early adopters of the game. I actually had, uh, I got an entire uh, venture capital firm addicted to Candy Crush uh, because I showed it to one of the partners. Um, and then this is, this is one part where we can all improve in because not a lot of people think about how the, the context of sharing offline and, and how to improve that. And the one thing that is kind of common to, to all of them is that it's, it's not about the technicalities of how you uh, pop up the, the ads and, and things like that. There is no magic SDK for that. It's, it's really about the way you design the games. And if you design it correctly, there are a few elements that you can really increase the, the number of sharing and um, the amount of sharing happening both offline and in all those channels, actually. So one thing that you really see in games that get shared a lot is that users, when they share a game with their friends, they try to rationalize it. So if I'm sharing, if I'm showing someone a game, either offline or on Facebook, it kind of becomes part of my identity. So I don't want to share a game unless uh, it's a cool game, unless it's sophisticated, unless it tells about me things that I want to be told about me, right? So people are more likely to share games that have a sophisticated look. If it's 2048, maybe it tells uh, more people I know math well because it's, it sounds like a highly mathematical number. 
uh, with uh, the tiles game. If it uh, didn't have the piano uh, sounds to it, I bet it had less sharing. Uh, I know people that when they shared Candy Crush with others, they explained um, that it really teases their brand and keeps, keeps them sharp. So they usually users give context to the sharing and if the game doesn't allow that context, if it, if it just looks like a silly game, then you will get a lot less sharing. So you need to think about how to make the game appear sophisticated to improve the number of, of sharing that's actually happening. The other thing that can really drive a lot of virality and sharing is tying the, the game to what's happening right now. So a lot of people share the game, especially on offline, uh, but again also on Facebook. If, if the conversation of the day is about something and your game is also about that something, then you're much more likely, uh, people are much more likely to mention that in casual conversations with people. And also you can get some press because it becomes like a hot item that is related to what's going on in the news today. And that's another uh, way to, to get more sharing and more virality going on, is to tie the game to a specific event. Some really successful games were able to, to tie uh, to either news events or uh, sporting events or things like that. And that's just a way to get more free virality and sharing uh, happening. Now I'm going to get more into the details of how to actually uh, work out the technicalities more around the, the digital ways of, of sharing. Um, and obviously what I mentioned before is you want the, the story right, but you also want uh, the timing and the, and the ease of, of sharing. And then uh, what we want uh, users to, to be able to do is share very easily. And the way to do that is to get them to connect first. So you can get them to connect on Facebook and then it's easier to share on Facebook. And if you get them to connect on Game Center, it's much easier to rate the game later because users don't have to switch out of the context of the app to rate the game. They can actually uh, rate the game within the context of the uh, Game Center widget. And then once we got a user to connect either on Game Center or on Facebook, we want to ask him to share our rate based on where he actually connected and what's the past path of least resistance there. So how do we get more users to actually uh, share on fa connect on Facebook or on Game Center? It, it doesn't really matter. It's the same techniques. So one thing that you see games that uh, one trick that game, uh, it's, it's not actually a trick, but one thing you see games uh, do is actually ask for, for users to connect. So if you don't ask users to connect, they would not connect, that's for sure. Um, and some games have it as a button, but the games that actually push that to the user, either in the first login or um, in uh, maybe every a few sessions, it depends on the right timing to, to do it. But actually asking the question really helps getting more users to connect and then those users are much more likely to share after. The other thing that you see games uh, doing uh, very well is um, they make the Facebook connect the least resistance option, right? So you can have, okay, connect with email, connect with Facebook and then like a small skip button. And users usually uh, like to choose between comparable options. There, are, there is a lot of research actually done about this subject. But if you give two options and make Facebook the easiest one of the two, then you will actually get more, fa more users to connect with Facebook. So no one, no one connects on email, that's for sure. But just having that button gets more users to actually connect on Facebook compared to not having that, that button. And obviously, uh, this also applies to um, getting users to connect on Game Center. It's the same techniques as well. The, the last one is incentivizing. Um, there are many games that have done that successfully. You need to be careful a bit. Uh, Apple just changed a, a few of the rules around that, but as, as of today, co incentivizing connecting to Facebook is still okay. Incentivize sharing is not okay. And the way you wanna do it is you, you can obviously give coins as incentive, but really what you wanna do is work that out to the story of the game. So the user, uh, the character is running and now he's, uh, you know, the character fell off a cliff and now he's dead. And, you have like, okay, connect to revive the character. That's a lot more appealing than get 2,000 coins. It's much more immediate satisfaction. So, so that's the, the right way to do it. And then um, obviously once they're connecting, you can uh, apply all the sharing features uh, as well. Now, once we get them connected, how do we get them to share? That's uh, another story uh, altogether. And then one thing that, uh, that we want to do is focus on the victories. And again, these apply to both sharing and rating, but a user that just 
broke his record or completed a, a very hard level, level 65 on Candy Crush or something like that, he's much more likely to share his achievement. And you need to really work that, find like the, the points in the game and pop that at the right timing. Okay, I did something that's really, um, I feel really good about it and, and I want to share it with my friends. And I, I want to rate the game now because I just feel so good about myself and about the game as well. And that's, that's uh, about the timing, the figuring out the right timing in the narrative to, to bring that up. And then another thing is, again, uh, figuring out the path of least resistance for the user, making it as easy as possible to share. So what I mentioned before, if the user is connected to Game Center, then um, push him towards rating your game. If the user is connected on Facebook, push him towards uh, Facebook, uh, again, towards sharing on Facebook. And the one thing that is happening on, on Facebook is that there are two ways to do it. Actually, this is very technical, but there is the web dialogue and there is the native dialogue, and the native dialogue is a lot smoother, so uh, it's highly recommended and actually reduces the friction and increases sharing. The other thing that, that is uh, very um, uh, effective is to find ways to work the, the sharing function into the story of the game, into the narrative. Uh, there is one game that is also using Sumla, by the way, um, and, I, and I like it a lot. It's called What If. Um, so the game basically asks you a question. What if uh, you were six feet tall, but then uh, you had only one leg or whatever, things like that. And then you have to respond yes or no, and, and it's kind of like fun uh, when you play with friends usually. And then every few questions, or every 20 or 30 questions, they will ask a questions like, what if you could make three app developers very happy, but you will have to rate their game? And then, you know, they have an insane amount of ratings in the app stores, just because they did it really nicely. And then you think, yeah, it's a nice game, I want to rate it. And then, you know, from there, it's, it's much easier to get that rating going on. The other example is uh, obviously the gifting on Candy Crush is a great example of how you work the social functions really into the, into the game and there are a lot of games that did that uh, successfully. Obviously with uh, multiplayer games it becomes very easy but a lot of the single player games can add a layer of challenging friends. Um, there are actually a few SDK companies that, that provide that type of service so if you have a single player game and you want to allow challenging between, uh, so I reached uh, 50 scores, now how much do you reach? This is actually pretty easy to implement now with, with a lot of uh, third party providers enabling that type of uh, thing. So, um, but the, the overall message is as much as you can fit that into feeling natively to share the game uh, and, and working that into the narrative, it, it would work better uh, for you. And then the other thing is the use of ads. So obviously we all need, uh, so some of us are fortunate enough to be able to sell a lot of in-app purchases and uh, um, uh, make money out of that, but most games I've seen need uh, advertising to, uh, to make money. But there is also a degree of how much you do it and when do you do it. And the problem with ads is that um, they're really not cool for the user. No one likes them. <laughs> And if a game just looks like a big ad, ad clutter, um, users are very unlikely to want to share it because you know I wouldn't want to recommend to a friend a game that is just full of ads. Um, and it needs to be a really, really cool game uh, to have uh, to, to, for me to uh, recommend it. And so um, there is that and also the fact that the ads usually appear between levels and this is also where you wanna pop up the sharing uh, function. So you need to work out kind of like a scheme of when do you actually uh, sh ask for sharing and when do you actually ask for um, uh, show ads. And it's all a matter of timing, right? So there is one thing uh, you can do is actually defer the ads uh, towards the later levels or w later parts of the game uh, and actually figure out if that user is a very good user, if he really likes the game, if he plays a lot, then he might share it, then he might buy. But then if he's not, then just show him a lot of ads uh, and, and monetize him that way. There is really no way around it uh, today. The other thing is actually uh, working that again into the narrative of the story and that's where opt-in advertising comes in. I'm a big fan of opt-in advertising. Actually as a user, I, like if there are videos that would give me coin in a game, I would just like watch them over and over. As much as there are videos, I would just watch, watch more and get more coins. And by doing that, the game doesn't look like an ad clutter, but you still make money off of advertising. 
and, and at the same time, the user is happy because he's getting coins, so it's, it's all around a much better, thank you. Um, it's all around a much better uh, solution for uh, at least at the beginning of the game. Then after that, you want to make more revenue, you can put the banner ads and the interstitials and, and all of that. But at the beginning, it's, it's a much less intrusive way of, of making money. And so just to wrap everything up uh, much more quickly <laughs> than, than uh, the time I had. Um, time. Yeah, but I, I don't have <laughs> many more slides. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, just to wrap everything up, you, you want to remember three things. You want to remember how to work the uh, sharing and rating into the story of the game, how to build a narrative that um, uh, enhances sharing and, and makes uh, uh, more sense for user to share the game, and then finding the right timing to ask for it, and also finding the right time to uh, advertise and not compete with uh, the advertising and sharing. And the last thing is really working on all those details that make it very easy to rate and share the game um, and connecting first, getting user to connect and then uh, share. So that's, uh, that's about it. Um, you're welcome to visit our blog. We have about, uh, we are constantly publishing more and more game design resources on our blog. Uh, there are a lot of uh, nice game review articles from game review from a design standpoint. So game design review articles. Uh, there are a lot of resources for both game design, game monetization, uh, user acquisition, all these things that uh, you all care about. We have about 2,500 uh, subscribers and about 10,000 uh, monthly readers. Uh, so it's, it's a great resource and uh, you're all welcome to, to check it out. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, nice talk, thank you. I have two questions. One is, our game is uh, is all about playing with friends, so we require that you log in through Facebook. If that's true, if we stay with that model, <coughs> is there any reason that we should do anything with Game Center, or should we just do everything through Facebook? So, so one thing, if your game actually requires uh, to play with your friends, the y you're actually limiting the user's ability to play on their own. And a lot of times users want to start playing on their own before they actually start playing with their friends. So the first thing I would actually do is every multiplayer game needs to be a great single player, especially on mobile. It's not true for like online RPG and things like that, but on mobile, a lot of the playing happens on like short intervals of time. I'm waiting for something, I'm at the bus, whatever. and to be able to play a single player game, just to check the game and like get a hang of it, is, is very good uh, even for multiplayer games. And then with Game Center, I didn't actually think about it, but yeah, Game Center, if you have a good uh, uh, thing going with Facebook, with playing with friends, I would stick to that. The only thing is with Facebook, you actually need to get it's not just finding random users, right? You need to actually, my friends needs to be on. So you need to make sure you have the critical mass for me to actually find friends that also play the same game. And that, that sometimes either, what, if you have a big user acquisition budget, you'll hit the critical mass, but if you don't, then you either need to enable another mode of like playing with random people or a single player game because you, you wouldn't hit that critical mass very soon. I, I'll follow up with you offline because okay. the real story is more complicated than that. But sure. assuming that they've logged into Facebook, we've minimized the number of permissions that we've asked for. It's just email and, yeah. and the public stuff. So let's say then uh, we're deep in the gameplay and we ask, we want them to share. Mm -hmm. We had not previously acquired the share. Well, I don't want to ask for share rights up front to scare them off. What what has to happen at that moment then? I, I think. Actually, you should ask for sharing permissions to begin with. I know I usually, uh, when I see that, I'm, I'm turning it off to be, I'm, I'm not not connecting, right? I'm just saying, turning it to only me. So, you know, it's effectively not sharing. But actually a lot of users are not that sophisticated, uh, I found. And yeah, if, if you look at, uh, if that you really want them to connect so you can actually share on their wall. So you don't wanna, to add another step on the way. Just ask them to begin with, like measure it, but you know, it's kind of different between different games. But I, I think you'll find that you, you don't see a lot of drop off for connecting. Um, over here. Oh, 
Thank you. Oh. You're next. Um, you touched on incentivized um, rating and uh, sharing. Have you ever encountered any pushback specifically from Apple or any other um, platforms? So back uh, like a month ago uh, when uh, Macworld was, uh, um, uh, you know, taking place, Apple um, kicked a few apps out of the marketplace and kind of created uh, some press around it and people started Today, as much as I know, there are still uh, a lot of uh, video advertising companies that have uh, incentivized video ads, and they're not kicked out. You know, uh, Ad Colony just recently got sold for $300 million to Opera, so I, I'm assuming that they, they would have reduced the price a lot if that was like not allowed by Apple. It would have cut like half their market. And I think, I don't believe Apple would actually go very strongly against it because it's good for the users and it's good for the developers. And so th there is no, a lot of argument that they can do there. And then they did say that they will start uh, uh, fighting apps that incentivize sharing because, yeah, obviously, you know, you're incentivizing people to, uh, you know, clutter their friends' walls and that's not so cool. But actually incentivizing connecting was, was never an issue. So um, I think it would still be OK, right? Kind of on the flip side of that, then, you mentioned this Apple, you know, no incentivized shares. And I know Facebook has a lot of filtering now because people got sick of the invites. So there's kind of yeah. a burnout factor. Do you see new trends or new opportunities now or in the future that you expect for virality? Interesting. I think still a lot of the, um, I would say more than on Facebook and on with rating, I think a lot of people discover apps offline. And I think by really creating a good narrative uh, around the sharing of the game uh, and creating more uh, reasons for people to talk about it, that's probably the, the biggest thing that, I don't know if enough uh, people are doing that. Yeah, more in like game design and like thinking about the scenario and actually even like observing what people are doing with, uh, with your game. Um, is, is something that I don't think it's maximized uh, by many game developers. Uh, that's one thing. Um, in terms of like digitally sharing, um, I, cannot, I cannot point to one like um, major way of doing that uh, other than the Facebook. I, I think Twitter is starting to, and, and maybe I think with Yahoo's latest acquisitions, they might be trying to become um, something more significant in the gaming space. And so it will be interesting to see what kind of things they, uh, so I know they have like their own uh, kind of like player services uh, now uh, that is um, kind of like Game Center. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's picking up, but I would keep an eye on that because they're just pouring money into like whatever is mobile gaming oriented and they're pretty significant company, so it's possible that they will be able to get something going with all that uh, money pouring in. So I would keep an eye on them as well. I just wanted to ask why I didn't see much mention of Twitter as a channel. Um, just a matter of, uh, you know, it's obviously the same principles apply. That's what I was thinking too, and I just wanted yeah. to you kind of didn't say Facebook slash Twitter. Yeah. What I discovered is that today, about 90% of like what the way game developers think about it is Facebook, and that might change, right? But today, that's that's what's really happening, and and so yeah, it's everything applies to Twitter as well. It's just a matter of like being less cumbersome and speaking with and less words, seen I guess. Some great examples on the App Store, I think, of people using Twitter to create virality and really, um, you know, it's such a direct communication message as opposed to Facebook and Ed Ring. Where nice. They, you know, Nice. We'd love to take a look at them if you can uh, either email me or like uh, I'll happy to get more examples uh, about Twitter sharing. Yeah. Great, thanks. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.